In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a database with the Oracle Database Configuration Assistant, which is a graphical tool that Oracle provides for you so you can create databases relatively easily. One of the things I'd like to stress, and I've stressed this in all the videos that I've created up to this point, is that Oracle gives you a lot of really cool graphical tools. It's really important to understand what's going on underneath the covers. Don't rely on the graphical tools because there may come a time where you have to work with an Oracle database and you don't have access to the uh, graphical tools. So you definitely want to make sure you understand everything that's going on underneath the scenes. And at the end of the database configuration assistant, we're going to see that we have the option of generating a text file of everything that Oracle is going to go out and do as it creates this database. And it's really important for us uh, to understand all of those pieces. Because this is the first time uh, I'm creating a database on this particular server, before I can run the database configuration, I have to configure my listener. So I'm going to go here into the Start menu uh, under my Windows uh, uh, Start menu, uh, go into my Oracle home where I have uh, Oracle installed and I have configuration and migration tools. There's a tool called a Net Configuration Assistant. So I'm going to run that guy. That should bring up on the screen real quick here. And let me center that. So we're going to create uh, a listener for this particular Oracle home. So I click on Next. I want to add a connection. I can call a listener anything I want. The standard name is listener. Uh, you don't have to use that. If you want an additional layer of security, you can call the listener something different. Uh, that might stop hackers from getting into your system and playing around with uh, connectivity to your Oracle database. Uh, it's also common to have multiple listeners for multiple database in a really complex environment. For now, I'm just going to call this listener. I want to use TCP. I have the ad additional protocols that are available for me. I'm going to use the standard port of 1521. Again, uh, for additional security, uh, you may want to change this port number, but 1521 is the standard port that Oracle databases listen on. No, I would not like to configure another listener. So, once I complete this, I'll have a listener configured inside my new Oracle home. Then I can jump back into the database configuration assistant and go ahead and create my database. So this is the first screen you see when you run the database configuration assistant. The graphical tools are really nice. It's going to hide a lot of the complexity away from you so you can create a database relatively quickly. But again, I want to stress, you really should understand everything that's going on underneath the scenes so that if you have to work with a database and you don't have access to these tools, uh, you, you, um, you can still work effectively with the database. And one of the nice things is that you can save off the file that we're going to do, uh, uh, that we're going to have at the very end before Oracle actually goes ahead and creates the database. You can sort of use that as a template uh, when you want to create other databases on your system. So I'm going to click on Next here. I have different options. I don't have any databases configured on my server right now, so I don't have an option to delete or configure. I can manage templates, so if I'm creating a lot of databases, I can create a template and use that over and over again. So in this one, I'm going to obviously create a database. First thing it's going to ask me for is what type of database do I want to create? A transactional database is a database where you typically have a lot of really small inserts and updates. You can think of like a video store. When you go in and rent a video, you have to update inventory, you have to get billing information. Uh, there's a whole bunch of little transactions that have to go through there uh, before somebody can walk out with a video from your store. A data warehouse is usually a lot different. It's usually set up so that you're doing a lot of big reads and writes. You already have a ton of information inside your database. And you're asking questions like, well, how many action movies were rented in September? That's going to require a lot of reads and writes to summarize that information. And Oracle can optimize parts of the database depending on what you want to do. Um, in this example, I'm going to choose general purpose or transaction processing. I can also so select custom database where I have total control of everything that's going to go on inside my database, but it takes a little longer to create the database uh, in that way. So I'm going to select this template here. And if I want to see what this template looks like, I can cl click on show template. And these are all of the different options that are going to be selected with my database. So we're going to go through all of these different guys uh, as we walk through. So for now, I'm going to uh, just uh, choose general processing. I have to give my database a name, so I'm going to call it Sandbox. So I'm just going to have this as a, a sandbox where I can do some work. 
Enterprise Manager is a graphical tool that allows you to do administrative things with your database. And again, it's a great tool, but you should really understand the details of what's going on underneath the scenes. Uh, again, you won't have, there may be times where you don't have access to a graphical tool, so you really have to understand all the bits and pieces that are going on there. Uh, we can also configure our database for uh, con local management, where I can set up alert notifications if I have access to an SMTP server. I can send out emails that says, hey, your database is filling up, you'll need to look at these data files, things are slowing down. You can set up all of those different types of things. You can also enable daily disk backups to a recovery area. Uh, for this little sandbox, I'm not going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to do something that you really shouldn't do on your database just to make things easier here. You can set up different administrative passwords for your system users. I'm going to go ahead and just pick one for all of them because I'm, I'm not going to keep any kind of information in this database that's important. Just going to be kind of a sandbox for me just to make things easier. I'm going to give everybody the same password. But under normal circumstances, this is not a good idea. You definitely want to have different administrative passwords uh, for all your system users out there. So Oracle has a database check to say, okay, your database uh, password should be uh, complex enough. And I didn't follow that. But So where do I want to store my information? Do I want to have a common location for all my data files? Do I want to use database files from the template that's already built? or do I want to use Oracle Manage Files? Uh, if you want to specify different locations for database files, pick any of the above options. So I have a whole bunch of different ways of storing data. Uh, one of the really nice advanced features of the Oracle database is something called Automatic Storage Management. I'm going to have a bunch of videos on that. And what ASM allows you to do is kind of set up areas on your disk where you're going to uh, say Oracle files can go, and then you don't really have to worry about it again. You do have to kind of ma uh, maintain it and do some administrative work with it, but for the most part, you can sort of just set it up and forget about it. So you can cut down on a lot of administrative tasks that way. For now, I'm going to store things in the file system. I'm going to use the database file locations for the template. And if I wanted to change any of those things around, I can click on File Location Variables, and it'll show me all the different places that it's going to stick files and uh, things that it's going to use as it goes in and creates a database. But for now, I'm going to select. I'm going to leave all of those as my default. I can set up a flash recovery area. Flash recovery area allows me to uh, recover things on my database relatively easily without having to do a full backup in case somebody drops a table or loses some data. Oracle will hold information in there. So this is going to default to uh, just looks like a little under 4 gigabytes. Because I have lots of disk space on my uh, server, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm also going to enable archiving. Archiving allows me to do something called a hot backup. And a hot backup allows me to back up my database without having to uh, shut it down. If I'm not in archive log mode, I can't do that. The only uh, things that are available to me uh, is a, a cold backup, which is uh, very inefficient. I have to shut down my database. And if you're in a 24-7 shop, you obviously can't do that. So I'm going to enable archiving. And we're going to have a couple of videos coming up on how to do hot backups. Do I want sample schemas in my database? I'm going to throw them in there. Under normal circumstances, you probably wouldn't do this in a production database because it's kind of a security hole. But for now, I'm going to throw it in there. Do I want to run any custom scripts along with my database creation? I might have something specific that I need in there. Again, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to select this. How much memory do I want to allocate to this particular database? Well, Oracle defaults to 40%. Because I'm not going to do a lot in this database, I'm going to shrink it down to 25%. And I'm going to use automatic mem memory management. If I didn't want to do that, I can go into custom, and I can change things around. How do I want to size my block size, number of processes that are going to run? Because I'm going to do some advanced things here, I'm going to change the processes up to 750. I'm also going to use Unicode character set. Unicode character set uh, gives me a lot more flexibility with some of the advanced uh, Oracle features on there. Uh, I don't have to use that. I can certainly use the default, which is an English uh, character set. But using the Unicode set, again, opens up some more uh, possibilities for me. Under normal circumstances, as users connect to your database, they get a dedicated server connection. If you have a ton of people connecting to your database, hundreds and hundreds of people, it's more efficient to use something called shared server mode, which allows you to pool your resources. Again, because this is just a, a, a simple sandbox database, I'm not going to select that. I'm going to stick with dedicated server mode. But know that this uh, thing is available, this uh, option is available for you if you have that type of uh, requirements in your database. 
So we have our character sets, we have our sizing set, we have our memory set. We can also look at all of the other initialization parameters. There's a file that goes along with or every Oracle database called an init.ora. And the init.ora allows you to set up exactly how your database is going to look and behave. Uh, here's an example of uh, all of some of the uh, all of the initialization parameters that I can change, and this is where I was talking about earlier between a transactional and a data warehouse type database. Uh, this is where Oracle can optimize a lot of different things depending on what you're looking for. So I'm going to stick with all of the other initialization parameters from now and click next. If you notice, the finish button has been here for a while also. I can skip over a lot of these wizards if I have everything set up the way I want it to be. And I can just click finish and it'll take me right to the end. A control file, we always want to multiplex our control files. They maintain the physical attributes of your database where all your disk files are. Uh, they're real small files. They don't get updated very much. It's always a good idea to have multiple uh, copies of your control file in case you lose one. Here's a specification of all the data files that are going to be created on my system. Redo logs, again, we want to multiplex these. Uh, we have the ability to multiplex these if we want. These are redo log groups where Oracle will write transactions as it's processing data. Again, makes it real easy for you to recover your database uh, in case something goes wrong. Here we're getting to the point where we're actually going to create the database. We can save all of the things that we uh, set up in this database as a template. And one of the things that we definitely want to do is we definitely want to generate the database creation scripts. Again, uh, I can't stress enough how important it is to understand everything that's going on behind the scenes. So I'm going to definitely check that box there to generate my database creation scripts. And once I click on uh, Finish, Oracle will go through, it will give me a confirmation and say, okay, here's my summary. Does this look you know what you want to do here it's going to set up all of these different procedures I mean all of these different uh, parameters yes that's exactly what I wanted to do Oracle is going to go ahead and generate the database configuration script so it went ahead and generated the files for me so now I can look in that directory and see what Oracle is going to do in the background I click on OK there Oracle will then kick off actually creating the database this is going to run for a while so I'm going to start up another video at the end of this to show uh, what we can do after the database has been created.